In his rooftop lab at the University of Oxford, Chris Holland is attempting to unwrap the secrets of this fabulous material. He studies Nephila, a species of tropical spider known to make massive webs. It's also a voracious subject. So the spiders that you see here aren't vegetarian. They eat flies, which is their favorite food. And this is how we feed them. Spider silk is an amazing material. It's managing to create a web that not only holds the weight of the spider, but also absorbs all the energy from the impact of a high-speed insect. And this is using fibers that are 30 times thinner than a human hair, creating not only something that's amazing for the spider, but also for man, so a material that outperforms any of our synthetic polymers. In order to study this material, Chris Holland harmlessly immobilizes the spiders and reels silk from them up to 30 meters at a time. The brilliant thing about spiders is that quite unlike a lot of animals that have to find their construction materials for their nests or their homes from the environment, for example, birds finding sticks to build a nest, yet the spider managed to keep a lot of its construction materials inside its body. And inside this spider, you'll see that there's enough to build three full webs. Unspun silk is stored in the spider as a sort of protein soup floating in chaos. But as this soup is pulled through a specially shaped gland in the body, it undergoes an almost instantaneous transformation. As it comes out of the spider's body, the silk changes state and becomes solid. Silk is made up of two types of proteins, long proteins, which are perfectly aligned by spinning to create strength, and other proteins randomly linked to create elasticity. Compared weight to weight, spider silk is stronger than steel and tougher than Kevlar. But how does silk change states so quickly? In order to explain this mystery, which fascinates scientists, Chris Holland prepares a mixture made from corn flour. This is an example of a non-Newtonian material, and it's something that behaves either as a liquid or a solid, depending on how much energy you put into it. If I try and put my hand in very, very slowly, you'll see that it sinks. But however, if I try and put my hand in very, very quickly, you'll see it behaves much more like a solid and quite differently. If I take out this material, if I put energy into it very quickly, I can crumble it like a solid, but then very slowly, and it turns again into a liquid. Inside the silk gland, the unspun silk behaves very, very similar to the material that we're using here. It's starting to be sheared very, very slowly because the silk gland is so fat. But as the silk gland narrows, the energy put into the unspun silk dope gets faster and faster and faster, and it transforms from a liquid gel into a solid fiber. The spider has several silk glands. This enables it to vary the material properties of the silk it produces, such as strength, density, or diameter, depending on its needs. Spinning a web is a highly complex and carefully choreographed operation. The first threads stretched out in a star shape to form a core support structure are made with the strongest silk. Then, a temporary frame is laid outward from the center of the web. At this point, the nature of the silk changes 
the spider moves back in towards the center, releasing a highly sticky, elastic silk. It swallows up the temporary frame threads as it goes. This trap's lethal weapon is sticky silk. Under an electron microscope, we see a string of pearls which form upon contact with the humidity in the air. These are minuscule droplets of glue. So as not to get caught in its own web, the spider coats the tips of its legs with a kind of wax which doesn't stick to the glue. Early morning dewdrops reveal the perfect geometry of these structures. But their shapes are not random. Thomas Hesselberg, another researcher with the Oxford Silk Group, has his subjects working in special frames, carefully arranged on the shelves of his lab. He studies how spider webs stand up against the natural elements. If it's very windy, the spider will usually not build a web at all. But in low winds, the spider will build a specifically adapted web. So that means it will build smaller webs, takes shorter time to build, but also it's less likely to be destroyed by the wind. In the university's wind tunnel, the researcher positions a spider on its web and gradually turns up the wind velocity. The circular form is an asset since it distributes forces evenly over the entire surface of the web, but only up to a point. If the winds are so strong that the spider risks losing the silk, the spider will take down the web. And while it's taking down the web, it will recycle the proteins in the silk so that it can use them again for when it decides to build a web the next time. The spider recycles the silk by eating its web, and in the process, also consumes any small prey that have been left by the wayside. Generally, the spider destroys and rebuilds its web once or twice each day. <laughs> <laughs>